We don't typically talk about Monday Night Football on this podcast because we do a separate video, but this one's too good. Like this is this one has to be talked about. We have to do uh, a, a segment here on this Eagles and Chiefs. I mean, thank you, the Island Game. Uh, this game, I thank you. You know, football gods. Uh, two and a half right now. It's an expensive two and a half. This is going to toggle between three and two and a half. Like this has been an argument in the market since this opened. It gets to three. People take the three, two and a half turns back into three. It just keeps going back and forth on this 45 and a half is your total. Adam, I played the Eagles on the money line. And my thought is this is I don't feel like I'm going to need the three points because I think the Eagles either win this game outright because they have figured out a way to get to this Chiefs defense or the Chiefs just win this thing at margin. I would almost play an alt on the Chiefs if I wanted that angle because it's the defense just wins out here and their defense is just way too good and there's nothing the Eagles can figure out, nothing the Eagles can do. And so for me, that was kind of the angle with all this. Got a plus 130 in the account on the Eagles. For whatever reason, like everyone hates, everyone wants to nitpick and pick apart the Eagles and every single thing that they do. And there's something to be said for every one of those nitpicks, in my personal opinion, for the fact that they have figured out ways to get it done along the way. And people point out, this is a stat that y'all have probably already heard this week. And if you have it, you're going to hear it between them. Like, Oh, uh, well, you know, we talked about this on Slack about the, you know, about the carries and stuff like that. I saw this today. They're like, his yards per carry is down this year. And I was like, because the tush pushes for one yard every single time. Like, well, yes. And they do it way more this year than they've done it in years past. Yes. His yards per carry is going to be down because half of his carries he's running for one yard. Like, I mean, it's like, what are we doing here? Like, I just can't, like, why are we not understanding what is happening on the field? Like, why are we looking at a, at a, at a static stat and not putting it into context as to why his yards per carry might be down? Yeah. They do the tush push like six times a game where he's getting one yard. I mean, like what in the hell is going on? So anyway, it's just, uh, to me, that's the angle Eagles outright, or maybe even a chiefs all like, I, I think that kind of goes one way or the other. What, what do you see here in, in the game of the year? So pretty much that's your same handicap that you had from Miami, Kansas City, right? Like you, you, you yeah. handicapped that game the same and said either they figure it out on offense or they don't figure it out on offense. And in that game, Miami did not figure it out on offense. Now, fundamentally, Philadelphia is better on the offensive line than Miami was. Fundamentally, I'll take Jalen Hurts versus Tua Tagovailoa in any game. And fundamentally, there is not a wide delta between A.J. Brown and Tyreek Hill. Um, what I will say for the other side of the ball is I think both of these teams are extremely stout up front, um, especially since we have seen um, Amenahieu come back for the Kansas City Chiefs. I'm looking at this as I don't think either one of these teams is a full score better than the other. So for me, it's a Philadelphia teaser leg. Um I have a very difficult time seeing the Chiefs with the way they play offense in 2023 running out the score on a good team. And we know Philadelphia is a very good team. These are the top two teams in my power ratings. I have this game exactly at Kansas City two and a half. And if you're going to give me eight and a half with a team that is as good on the offensive line and as good on the defensive line as Philadelphia is, I don't think this is a Philadelphia team that can be blown out by anyone. What uh, what do you say here in this one, Stephen? I mean, it's just, it's going to be fascinating, right? Because in years past, I don't think we would say, well, you know, if this defense can't hold up for the Chiefs, the Eagles could win this thing at margin because we would always be thinking, oh no, the offensive side is going to be able, you know, so high powered, they're going to be able to do whatever they want to do. But that is you know, not been the case so far with the Chiefs. The offense actually at times has looked pretty clunky, um, but the defense is so good that they hadn't really gotten exposed for it. Um, what do you see here in a game in which the both both of these teams are coming off of a bye? First of all, I want to mention a prop that Adams mentioned a couple times this year, and I think it's pretty solid for this week too. Patrick Mahomes rushing yards over under 25 and a half. He's gone over that total six of nine games this year. Um, 
and last game he had 24 rushing yards. So, you know, a little bad luck not going over that number. I think that has to do with, you know, having trouble in the passing game, not having as many explosive plays, scrambling and, and improvising. So, Adam, any do you agree with that again? This I want to add. Like well, I want to add something to that. I want to add Nicobe Dean being on IR to that, because the only thing that would have mm-hmm. concerned me is the speed of the linebacking core for Philadelphia. But with him on IR, I like what you're saying more. Yeah, there you go. In terms of the handicap I have for this game, you know, I I think the spread is correct. I don't think in a game of this magnitude with so many opinions on both sides, every time it touches three, Eagles betters come in, bet it down. So we're at the right number. So this is just one man's opinion of the game. I think there's one big weak link in this game, and it's the Eagles passing defense. And now it's against Mahomes albeit with some issues at wide receiver, but in particular with the Eagles defense defending the pass, their opponents have been number one in the NFL in pass rate over expectation. They are almost Titans level of pass funnel defense at this point. So Mahomes, you know, in any Chiefs game, you're you're begging Mahomes to throw it a ton for the most part, no matter who his receivers are. So love that for the Chiefs. And if you look, a little bit more closely at what the Eagles have done against the pass over the past month against Tua, Sam Howell, and Dak Prescott. They are 31st in drop back success rate, 26th in red zone defense. So I think Mahomes with extra time is going to have a, a really good chance to pick this defense apart. And you mentioned it earlier in, in the show, Adam. I thought the Eagles really should have lost that game to Dallas. And they had some fumble luck go the, their way. They had three fumbles. They recovered them all. And the Kansas City defense, as, we, as we've mentioned over and over again this year, is greatly improved. Top five unit by EPA and success rate. Top three against the pass. Number two in pressure rate. That weak link for the Eagles defense was enough for me to bet Chiefs minus two and a half. Yeah. Um, what about the what about the Chiefs run defense? Because if you want to talk about weak links, they're in the bottom three, four in every single metric in in the NFL where they're going up against a very powerful run offense in, in the Eagles. I just just play devil's advocate here because there is and I understand they're giving up something that is a in 2023, a less efficient way to to go about things. But it is the Eagles, and they do run the ball very, very well with that offensive line and stuff. So maybe it doesn't maybe it isn't so inefficient when it comes to the to the Eagles it's it's a good argument I'll just say that this is the one thing about the Eagles offense this year is that has confused the hell out of me and I don't understand what's going on but last year when they made their Super Bowl run we talked about how dominant they were running the ball to the point where they're actually more efficient running the ball than most teams were passing the ball it was just otherworldly historic stuff since the second month of the season on this year, I don't know what's going on, but the rushing metrics for the Eagles offense aren't anywhere near what they were last year. They're not even above average right now in that span in terms of rush EPA and success rate. All the pieces are there. They're mostly the same pieces. You know, you, you take out Miles Sanders, you put DeAndre Swift in. I don't know why they're not running the ball as well as they were last year, but they're not. So I'll just say that I'm not I'm not running into this game just assuming that the Eagles are going to be good running the ball because they were last year. The stats are telling me something's wrong here with the, with the rushing offense. Adam, just one last thing. Cause it's just, it's just, cause this is just such a fascinating game in, in all of this. You're going to hear another million times between now and Monday, Andy read off a buy, Andy read off a buy, Andy read off a buy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I, buy into Andy Reid being one of the top five coaches in the NFL. And I do believe that Andy Reid probably does take advantage of a bye week better than most, but the Eagles are also coming off of a bye. So this isn't like a rest versus, you know, situation. And then also I would also argue that he has had far more talent on the majority of these teams coming out of buys than he has on this year as well. Just wanted to throw that out for some commentary, because again, that is going to be a narrative this week as well. Yeah, we don't have as much history of Nick Sirianni off a bye, but is there a significant coaching deficit between Andy Reid and Nick Sirianni? No, there's not. I mean, we have the history on Andy Reid. We don't have the history yet on Nick Sirianni, but we've got a lot of pretty good evidence in the short sample that we have that Nick Sirianni is a sharp coach, to your point about talent. 
Steven brought up the idea of the weak link of the passing defense for Philadelphia, and I would say someone's got to be there to take advantage of it because the one thing that Philad- that the Kansas City Chiefs do not have are effective wide receivers. Uh, they do have Travis Kelsey, and so if you want to play it that way, play it on Travis Kelsey specifically. Uh, to me, I don't look at a group uh, of MVS and Rasheed Rice and company who are the group that is going to be able to take great advantage of the Philadelphia weakness in the back end, I do think Travis Kelsey could be the guy to be able to yeah. take advantage. Yeah, I, I think this is a banger of a Kelsey game, potentially. Yeah. Like, alts. Take, if you're going to bet Kelsey, just bet the alts, because I think yeah. this could be a banger, Adam. Yeah, no, no, for sure. Like, I mean, it, I imagine he gets early, often, tons and tons. And probably, if you're the Eagles, maybe you kind of almost invite that and, like, just assume at some point down the line the little seven-yarders aren't going to add up to, like, you know, sustaining these long drives. I mean, maybe you almost invite kind of keeping it underneath to to Kelsey or whatever. His reception prop, it would not surprise me if he has 12 catches in this game. I, I'm being dead serious when I say this. Like, I mean, it, like, I... I I am I agree with you, Stephen. A ton like alts on Kelsey like all day long. Like that he is going to not get just because Taylor Swift's going to be there for the record. That's not do why we, I, do it. I we don't even know if she's going to be. She's been she's got a South American tour. I mean, do we know for sure she's going to be there? I guess when you have private jets, you can do whatever you want. She, to, she right? got the best planes. Yeah, I mean she's got she has all the best planes. She does all the best planes.